Hi, these are the trigonometry lectures for educator.com and today we're going to learn about one of the really big rules of trigonometry which is the law of sines. In a later lecture we're going to learn another rule called the law of cosines. So they kind of go hand in hand and the idea is that these rules help you figure out what the uh, angles and sides are in any triangle. And I really mean any triangle here. Remember a rule we learned before was Sokotoa. That was kind of the old rule. The thing about Sokotoa is it only works, only works in right triangles. In other words, triangles where one angle is a right angle. So that was our old rule. Our new rule is the law of sines, and we're going to be learning the law of cosines in the next lecture. And the law of sines works in any triangle, so you can always use it. If you happen to have a right triangle, it's probably easier to use Sokotoa. But if you don't have a right triangle, you want to use the law of sines or the law of cosines, which we'll learn about next. So let me draw a picture to get us started here. So here's a triangle. It doesn't look like a right triangle. Um, it's traditional in trigonometry problems to kind of label the sides and corner, the sides and the angles of a triangle so that you can keep track of what's opposite what. So normally you would label these things as A, B, and C, the corners with capital letters A, B, and C, and then you label the sides with lowercase letters A, B, and C, and you do it in such a way that lowercase si side labeled lowercase a is opposite angle labeled uppercase a. So that puts the a over here, the b over here, and c over here. So what we're going to be doing is looking at a lot of different triangles where you'll be given some information about some of the sides and some of the angles, but you won't be given all of the information. So you'll be told a couple of the, the lengths of a couple of sides and maybe one of the angles or maybe the measures of two of the angles but not the third angle and then the measure of one of the sides, things like that. And the trick here is you want to use the law of sines and whatever else you can to find out all the angles and all the sides of the triangle. That's called solving the triangle completely when you figure out what all the angles and all the sides are. So. There are several different ways that the information could be given to you, and you'll hopefully remember some of these from your geometry class. Um, the first one is angle side angle. So what that means is that, let me draw a picture of this, kind of as you walk around the edge of a triangle, you'll know what one angle is, and then you'll know what one side is, and you'll know what the next angle is. So you'll be given two angles and a side, and it's important that they be in that order. So the angle comes first, and then a, the, the following side, and then the next angle. So when you have, when you're given an angle side angle setup, you know that it always has a solution. There's always a solution. There's always a triangle that has those properties, and it's always unique. Um, meaning that there's only one triangle that has those properties. So you're always looking for just a single triangle. Um, there is one thing that you need to check, which is that the two angles that you're given must add up to less than 180 degrees. And that's not so surprising because, of course, if you're given two angles that are bigger than 180 degrees, collectively bigger than 180 degrees, they can't be the two angles of a triangle because we know all three angles of a triangle sum up to 180 degrees. So the next situation that you might be given is side angle angle. So let me draw that one. So this one was angle side angle. Uh, you might be given side angle angle. So that means, again, walking around the edge of a triangle, you're told what one side is, and then you're told what one angle is, and then you're told what the next angle is. And Again, assuming that the angles sum up to less than 180 degrees, because if they sum up to more than 180 degrees, you're never going to get a triangle. But assuming that the angles sum up to less than 180 degrees, 
This again will have always exactly one solution. So you know you're going to find a triangle and you're just going to have to worry about one triangle. Uh, the more complicated case, it's called the ambiguous case. You might see something in your trigonometry book called the ambiguous case, is side-side angle. where you're told the length of one side and then another side and then one angle. And this one gets a little tricky because when you're told uh, two sides in a row and then an angle that's not the angle in between them, it's one of the, ang one of the other two angles, um, this does not always have a solution. It might have no solution. So you might try to solve it out and you'll get into some kind of problem. We'll see some examples of that, so you'll, you'll see how it works uh, or fails to work. Um, or it might have exactly one triangle that has those properties, or there might be two triangles. So that gets a little confusing, and we'll, we'll try some examples of that in the ex examples. Um, angle, 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 you could potentially be given. But the thing about angle, 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 if you're just given the three angles of a triangle, well, you could take that angle and blow it up, or take that triangle and blow it up or shrink it as much as you want, and it'll, you'll get similar triangles that have the same three angles. So that never has a unique solution. It always has infinitely many solutions, assuming that those three angles sum up to 180 degrees. But those triangles, the, the triangles that you get are all going to be similar. They're all going to be uh, proportionate to each other. So. That's the, uh, you could get larger and smaller versions of the same triangle if you're only given angle, angle, angle. So let me fill these in. This was the side angle, angle, and this was the side, side angle case. Uh, there's two other cases you might be given, but we're not really going to talk about them in this lecture, but I'll, I'll mention them now and then we'll start solving those triangles in the next lecture. And the reason is that they really work better for the law of cosines. So after we learn the law of cosines in the next lecture, then we'll study these two cases. So those two cases are side angle side, where you're given two sides and the angle between them. So side angle side. That's different from side side angle because of the, or, the position of the angles. In side angle side, the angle is in between the two sides you're given. In side side angle, it's one of the other angles. And then the other case we'll study, so that was side angle side. The other case we'll study in the next lecture is side side side, where you're given all three sides of the triangle. And both of those cases don't really lend themselves very well to solutions by the law of sines. So we'll use the law of sines um, for these first three cases, angle, side, angle, side, angle, angle, and side, side, angle. We'll use, them for those, use the law of sines for those three cases. And then in the next lecture, we'll learn about the law of cosines, and we'll study side, angle, side, and side, side, side. So let's get to some examples now. First example, we're given uh, an angle, another angle, and a side. So the first thing we need to do is draw a picture of this triangle and then see where we can go from there. So I've got A, B, C. Remember, you use capital letters for the angles and then lowercase letters for the sides. And you always orient them so that Lowercase a is opposite angle a. That puts b down here and c over here. And we're given that c has length 4. We're given that angle a measures 50 degrees. And angle b measures 60 degrees. And so what we have here is we're given two angles and a side between them. So this is angle side angle. Um, and remember, with angle, side, angle, that's one that has a unique solution if the angles add up to less than 180. And in this case, the angles sum up to 
110, which is less than 180. So there is a unique solution. So we're going to try to solve the triangle. Remember, that means find all the angles, um, find all the, the, the measures of all the angles and the lengths of all the sides. Well, there's one that's very easy to start with, which is angle C, because that's just 180 minus A minus B, which is 180 minus 110, which is just 70 degrees. So I know that angle C is, a, is 70 degrees. Looks like my triangle's not really drawn to scale here because that angle's a little bit smaller than 70 degrees. Uh, that's OK. We can still do the trigonometry on this. Um, I didn't know ahead of time that it was going to be 70 degrees because I hadn't solved that part yet. So that's OK. We'll, we'll still work out the rest of the trigonometry. Now, we're going to use the law of sines to solve the rest of this. So let me write down the law of sines. Remember it says sine A over A is equal to sine B over B equal to sine C over C. So let's see. We've got to figure out what little a and little b are. Those are the only things that are missing in our triangle. So I'm going to use sine a over little a is equal to I think I'm going to use sine c over little c because I already know what little c is. If I use b, and then I wouldn't know what little b was, and so I, wouldn't, I would have too many unknowns. So sine a is sine of 50 over a is equal to sine of 70 over c is 4. And if I cross multiply there, I get 4 sine 50 is equal to a sine 70, or a is equal to 4 sine 50 over sine 70. And now it's a matter of plugging those values into my calculator. And a very important uh, concept that sometimes trigonometry students forget about, and is I mentioned this in the previous lecture, but I want to emphasize it again is that your calculator needs to be in degree mode if you're, talking, if you're working these problems out using degrees. If your calculator is in radian mode, then it won't know what to, well, it will know what to do with sine 50 or sine 70, but it won't be what you want. So you need to convert your calculator into degree mode before you solve any of these problems if you're using degrees. So I've converted my calculator. I've used the mode button to convert it from radians into degrees. And now I'm going to work out four times sine of 50 divided by sine of 70. And what I get is approximately, I'm rounding this a little bit, 3.26. So that tells me that A is approximately 3.26. So I've solved for A. Now I'm going to solve for little b the same way. Sine of capital B over little b is equal to sine of capital C over little c. And I'll fill in what I know here. I know that capital B is 60 degrees. Don't know little b yet. Capital C is 70 degrees. And little c is 4. And so again, I'll cross multiply. B sine 70 is 4 sine 60. So B is equal to 4 sine 60 over sine 70. And I'll plug that into my calculator. So 4 sine 60 over sine 70. And that gives me approximately 3.69.
So now I've solved the triangle. I've found the lengths of all three sides, and I've found the measures of all three angles. The key to solving this problem is to identify which quantities you're given. We were given two angles and a side. Uh, once we knew that it was angle side angle, we knew we had a unique solution because the angles weren't, didn't add up too big. We could find the third angle, and then we kind of worked our way around using the law of sines to solve down and find the missing side lengths. So we'll try some more examples of that. Now we're given triangle ABC, which, let's see, we have, we're given side A, side B, and angle A. So let me draw that out. Again, my drawing might not be to scale, and that, that's all right. So A, B, and C, always use capital letters for the angles, and then lowercase letters on the opposite sides, A, B, and C. And we're given that angle A is 40 degrees, and we're given that side A has length 3, side B has length 4, and we want to solve for the other quantities here. So the first thing is to identify what kind of information we've been given two sides and an angle that is not in the middle. So this is a side-side angle uh, configuration because the angle is not in the middle. That would be side-angle-side. And so side-side angle, if you remember back to the beginning of the lecture, it might have... Side-side angle is the ambiguous case. It might have no solutions, one solution, or two solutions. So that's a little disturbing that this thing could have more than one solution or it might not have a solution. We have to solve it out and see what we can find. So we're going to use the law of sines that says sine A over little a is equal to sine b over little b is equal to sine c over little c. We'll, we'll solve that out and we'll see what we can find. So let's start with, um, I see that I know angle A and side A, and I know side B, but not angle B, and I don't know anything about the C. So I'm going to start out with the A's and B's. I'll start out with uh, sine A over A is equal to sine b over b. Now sine of a, that's sine of 40, over a is 3. And sine b, I don't know what that is yet. And little b is 4. So I'm solving this thing for sine of b, so if I multiply the 4 over, I get sine of b is equal to 4 sine 40 over 3. And so if I work out what 4 sine 40 over 3 is, It tells me that it's about 0.86, 0 0.86. So I'm looking for an angle whose sine is around 0 0.86. By the way, I've got my calculator in degree mode since the angles were given in degrees. So I'm, I'm looking for an angle whose sine is about 0.86. Now, here's the thing. If I just type arc sine of 0.86 on my calculator, it'll tell me that B is approximately equal to 59.0 degrees. But this is where it gets really tricky because remember if you're looking for an angle whose sine 
is 0.86. Remember, that means its y value, sine is the y value, is 0.86. There are two angles that have that value as its sine. There's, there's a theta, and then there's, well, let me, this big angle, which is 180 minus theta. So sine of 180 minus theta is the, is the same as sine of theta. So since we know that sine B is 0.86, B could be 59 degrees. Angle B could also be 180 minus 59 degrees. In other words, 121 degrees. So we've got two different possibilities for our angle B. That means we're going to have two different triangles. We have two solutions here. So we have two solutions depending on which angle B is. And for each one, we're going to have to solve around and find the other information in the triangle using that value for our angle B. So that's a little disconcerting. Let me go to a new slide and we will draw out each one of those triangles with each one of those solutions. So we already figured out with this problem that there are two solutions. So let me solve each one of those separately. Here's A, B, and C. We're given that A was 40 degrees. There's A, B, and C. And side A has length 3, side B has length 4. In the first solution that we figured out on the previous page, B had measure 59 degrees. And then we want to figure out the values of the other uh, angles and lengths in the triangle. So first of all, C, angle C, is 180 minus 40 minus 59. And that works out to 81 degrees, 81.0 degrees. And now let's figure out what the length of side little c is. So we'll use the law of sines for that. Sine of capital C over C is equal to sine of capital A over A. And so sine, we figured out that C was 81 degrees. 81.0 over little c is equal to the sine of capital A is 40 degrees and A was 3. If we cross multiply that, uh, we get C is equal to 3 sine of 81.0 degrees over sine of 40 degrees. And now I'll work that part out on my calculator. 3 sine of 81, remember put your calculator in degree mode for this, over sine of 40. And I get an approximate answer of 4.61 for our side C there. So now I've solved that triangle completely. I've found all three sides and all three angles. But there's another solution, remember, with a different angle for B. And I have to start all over with that possible triangle. So let me redraw the triangle from scratch, because I don't want to get confused with any of my earlier work. And even though I'm drawing it in a similar fashion, remember, this is not drawn to scale. So this will be, this triangle would actually look quite different if we drew it to scale. So in the other solution, 
angle B measured 121 degrees. A was still 40 because that was given in the original problem. And now we have to find the values for this new triangle. Um, it's the same uh, solution technique, so we'll go and be going through the same kinds of calculations, but we're using completely different numbers now. So C is equal to 180 minus 40 minus 121.0. And that comes out to be uh, 140 minus 121 is 19.0 degrees. So now we found C is 19.0. Uh, but we still have to find side little c, so we'll use the law of sines for that. Sine of capital C over little c is equal to the sine of capital A over little a. And so if we fill in what we know, sine of 19.0 over little c is equal to sine of 40. And little a we were given was 3. And so if we cross multiply, we get c is equal to 3 sine of 19.0 over sine of 40. Got my calculator set on degree mode. so. 3 sine of 19 divided by sine of 40. My calculator tells me that that's approximately 1.52. And so now I've solved that triangle completely. I've got three angles and three side lengths, uh, totally different from the angles and side lengths that we solved for in the first triangle, even though they both satisfy the initial da data given in the problem. So that's kind of the, uh, the curse of the side-side angle case. It is ambiguous, and you can get more than one solution. Um, the way we figured out that there were two solutions was when we initially tried to solve for angle B. We figured out sine B over B is equal to sine A over A, and then we solved for sine B was equal to a particular number there, but I think it was 0.8, around 0.8. But the problem is that there's more than one angle that has that sign, and we have to investigate the possibility of both of them. So that's what led us to the two solutions. So we went with each one of those angles. We found the one by, by uh, the arc sign button on my calculator, or the inverse sign. But then the other one, the other one we found by subtracting that angle from 180, because those angles have the same sign. And then with each of those angles, those set us on two completely different roads to solve down the triangles using the law of signs and find the other values of the triangles and get us two completely different answers both of which are valid, both of which uh, satisfy the initial data given in the problem. So for our next example, we're given a triangle ABC, and we have, again, two side lengths and an angle in, uh, not, not in between them. So let me draw this out. Angles are always capital letters, ABC. The uh, sides are always lowercase letters opposite the angle with the same letter. So there's little a, b, and c. This time we're told that angle a, that side a has length 7, side b has length 12, and angle a measures 45 degrees. And it says determine how many triangles there are with these conditions and solve them completely. So the first thing is to figure out which of those situations we're in. Side, side, angle, side, angle, side, angle, side, angle. <coughs> Excuse me. And so what we want to do is look at this, and we've got two sides and an angle, but the angle's not in between them. So this is side, side, angle. Side, side, angle. So unfortunately, that's the ambiguous case.
So it could have no solutions, no triangles at all. Uh, it could have one solution. Or it could have two solutions. So we don't really know yet without doing a little extra examination here. So we're going to start out using our law of sines and see what happens. So let me remind you what the law of sines is. Sine A over A is sine B over B, which is sine C over C. And which of those pieces of information have we been given? Well, we know what A is, capital A, so I can find its sign. I know what little a is. I know what little b is, and that's it. So it makes sense to solve for sine of capital B. Let me rewrite that. Sine A over A equals sine of capital B over B. So sine of 45 degrees over little a is 7 equals sine of b, capital B, over little b is 12. And if you cross multiply that and then solve for sine of b, we get sine of capital B is equal to 12 sine 45 over 7. And I'll plug that into my calculator. So 12 sine of 45 divided by 7. comes out to 1.21 approximately. And this is very significant because, let's look at this, 1.21 is equal to the sine of capital B. Now remember, the sine of any angle is always between negative 1 and 1. And here we've got the sine of an angle equal to 1.21, that's bigger than 1. So that's a real problem. Sine of B here is greater than 1. That's a contradiction of what we know about sines and cosines, which means that there cannot be any triangle satisfying these conditions. So as soon as we get to sine of B being bigger than 1, we, get no, we know that no such triangle exists. If you try to find the arc sign on your calculator of something bigger than 1, my calculator gives me an error because it knows that signs should always be between negative 1 and 1. And so immediately I know that something's gone wrong. And what's gone wrong is that we must have been given uh, bogus initial data so we know that no such triangle exists. So we know that there are no solutions here, which in a sense is fortunate because it means we don't have to do a lot of work to go ahead and try to find the other sides and angles because we know there isn't any such triangle in the first place. So we'll try some more examples like this later.